Hey, what's up guys? And welcome to the all new MVP CGX. Now for those asking, I know it's a new product and people are wondering how it's related to our panel CMX2. Uh, it's not. CMX2 is for extracting color grades from other images and then applying them to your own. It's a good creative and fun process. And CGX, which really kind of stands for color grade X, if you will, at least internally, um, is for color exploration using curves now not just exclusively curves but curves predominantly which is such an amazing and beautiful it's hard to describe if you're new to it which is why we made a panel that makes everything simpler using curves to color grade and change contrast and change brightness is so powerful everything ends up like i said smoother um it's hard to describe it but the results are so beautiful especially when you're dealing with like 16-bit high res high res images excuse me and but people, when you tell them, hey, color grade with RGB curves, they they try it and it's not the most intuitive thing. So that led us down this path of creating a color exploration tool for Photoshop um, that is fun and practical and best of all, easy. So how do we start? Let's walk you through that. Welcome to the quick start, if you will, on using CGX. So you have two core functions. You have the create tab and the explore tab. Now they are related, but it depends on how you want to kind of go about your exploration. So I'm gonna go ahead and start you guys on explore. I think that's the best way to understand what it does and to learn about it. So we're gonna go through all the four sliders and the two color wheels and all of that, but let's look at the bottom buttons first. I think that's super important to look at. So in fact, let me just move this somewhere a little easier. There we go. Now. On the bottom left, we're going to have, we'll show you that in a minute. We have a back and the bottom right, we have a forward, which is currently off. That is your history states, because as you cycle through random colors, random color grades, you sometimes want to go back to the one you just went to, you know, oh, I like that one better. Or that one two or three ago was pretty nice. You can go back and forth in your history states. All right. We have a play button which stands for create, if you will, which I'll talk about why that's different in a minute. But the main one I want to show you is the randomize button, the two arrows. OK, so we're going to go ahead and not worry about anything. We're going to pretend that we're brand new to CGX or we're going to open it up and we're going to hit the arrows to create a grade. And now we have a grade. OK, now, if you open up the CGX look folder, you'll see that there's a bunch of different layers in there, three of which are curves. And that is how we're modifying the grade. OK, so we hit random once and we got a grade. If I were to turn it off, we see it went from this to this. We have a cool grade. Now, what's happening here? OK, let's explain how this works. All right. So when you hit the arrows, double arrows and get random, it literally will pick any random set of colors for the highlights, colors for the shadows, random intensity, saturation, brightness and contrast. Now, these randoms are not purely random. They're not just outputting a number and then get a result. That would be chaos. 99% um, of the results would be unusable um, and very silly looking. Uh, so we have it throttled, if you will, into a range that makes sense <laughs> through testing of hundreds of images. So I kind of like that one, but let's keep going to show you how it works, right? So I'm going to randomize again, randomize again, randomize again. Now, the big difference is that we're not just randomizing color. We're randomizing uh, the intensity of the color which is a little different than saturation, as well as saturation, brightness, and contrast individually, allowing us to change these things individually shortly. So let's say I'm liking this, but between her tattoo work and the very minimal colors in the images beyond her tattoos, I'm getting a lot of radical results that I don't love very much, but I like kind of where I'm going. Okay, so what these sliders, the way they work is you have a range, okay? This is the minimum range on the left node and the maximum on the right node, and they all have the nodes. So I can say, let me slide this one over on intensity to low intensity and maybe this one over. So now I can randomize just in here. A couple of different things I can do. I can randomize just the intensity with the double arrows next to intensity, or I can hit play, which will reshuffle everything, okay? But within the ranges I've picked, the double arrows will restart the whole process to full random. But if I hit play now, everything else, all the ranges that are currently selected, everything will shuffle in there. So let's hit play. And as I keep hitting play, you'll notice that most of my results have a low intensity because that's what I picked here. How do we prove that elsewhere? Let's boost the saturation. I want nothing but high saturation results. Hit the play button. And as you can see, every result has a high saturation. We can prove that the opposite by taking that range really tight. And now every result will have a relatively low saturated range. And you're probably guessing we can pull them apart 
and who knows what saturation will get look to look just in case you're not 100 percent sure but keep in mind like i said let's put that more in the middle so we get more predictable results on the intensity i can just hit this double arrow next to it and i can get different intensities it'll only reshuffle that one same with saturation let me put it kind of low i can reshuffle that one and just get different saturation levels okay and of course brightness and contrast you can imagine how they work what's great is that intensity brightness and contrast as well as the highlights and shadow hues are using curves which is a beautiful beautiful sort of like i said really smooth result now the wheels themselves let's say i go to shadows and i can pull the color range up to 180 degree hue angle and i say i want sort of blues to red oranges potentially for the shadows okay so then i hit the little play button in between and i can cycle through different colors in that range and the highlights, I can also ask, leave them that, that range and just keep cycling through those. Let me cycle through some intensity. Or if I know that I like these ranges, but I don't know what I want, go to the play button and cycle them all. Okay, so let's say I like this and I go, oh, I really like that intensity and the saturation. Okay, I can hit the lock buttons next to them and now they're locked. So now when I play again, the intensity and saturation will not change. See? I can also lock the color. So if I like these colors, I say I like the highlights. I can lock just the highlights, but in this case, I'm going to also lock the shadows. Now I'm only cycling brightness and contrast. Everything else is fixed. You see the, the sort of exploration process, right? Now, without explaining it overly, let's do it again. Okay. We're going to reset top left button. There we go. So let's say I open up an image and I, I finish an image um, in terms of my cleanup, color correction. And now I want to do some color work. So I hit the random. And let's see what I get. I'm going to hit random a few more times. I kind of like what I have here. Okay, this is kind of working. I, in I enjoy that. But I want a little, potentially some more intensity. So let me shuffle that one around a little bit. Okay, I sort of like that. All right, so I'm going to lock that. I, I already like my colors. So I'm going to lock those. And I'm going to see what happens. I don't know if I want a lot of contrast or low contrast. I don't know if I want a lot of saturation or not. Ra open those up. Lock the other three. Hit play. And now I'm going to get various contrast and brightness and saturation levels. And if I determine at one point, there you go. I like the contrast. Boom. Lock it. Keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Okay. You know what? That works. Maybe I love that and I'm done. Now the color grade is done. Okay. And that's a cool look from that to that. Let's say that's cool, right? I can immediately hit the little plus button here. Add preset. I can just call it a uh, warm two. I don't know. I'll add it to a folder I already created called warm grades, but I can choose add group if I want. I can make it a favorite and hit save. Now over here on the presets, you'll see that is under warm grades. There's warm two and I have previous one. So I can double click sunny. I can double click purples. <laughs> I can double click this one that I was using for a Lindsay shot browns and back to warm two. And all those settings are here right so that's really cool in terms of like an actual color exploration process right now we'll, we'll go back to this in a minute but let's go to the create tab because it works slightly different just, just for grins i'm going to go ahead and just delete the layer stack and start over okay so let's say i have i'm going to reset the sliders cool everything's down the middle by the way when you reset on create it immediately puts out a layer stack that's pretty much straightforward with nothing on it let me explain what that means intensity if i take it to zero and all these other sliders are in the middle on create nothing has changed create is a little more literal instead of random exploring you can randomize it but instead of random exploring you're kind of giving cgx some basic instructions of what you think you want and you see it work in real time so let's say i want sort of um, high you know sort of cyanish highlights and dark red purplish shadows put the intensity up and see how that's working for me I like that. Okay. The hue shift is there just in case you need to make something more red or more yellow. Very common. And then saturation. We can boost the saturation. We can decrease saturation. A little more literal. Like I said, I can increase the contrast and get a look that I want. I can increase the brightness and get a look that I want. And if I think to myself, you know what? This is sort of working. I'm dialing in what I want. I kind of like it. I want the highlights maybe a little more blue, something like that. Okay, okay. I can take the opacity down if I want. No, I like the opacity up. Now, if I like this, but I'm not 100% sure, I can still sort of explore. 
I can just hit the play button and it'll shuffle near a very reasonable range near where you're at to give you variations on what you've picked. So you can come here and say, you know what, let's make the highlights yellow and make the shadows blue and then keep playing around that. Very, very cool. And if you're like, you know what, this is not a direction I like, you hit the full random and you'll get full random now on create, which unlike explore, which has ranges that'll shuffle, you get a result and then you can change it. So you can change the contrast directly downward. If you want to modify it directly, you can shift the highlights more towards yellow, more towards pink on the shadows. And again, I want to make this clear. It's so cool. Okay. We're using RGB curves. And as you modify things, the curves are calculated for you. We have various algorithms that are calculating the curves for you. Now, saturation is handled independently, but brightness is handled via curves. Okay. Contrast is handled via curves. They have their own curves layer uh, for it. So we can have directly, you know, independent as well. And if I were to choose pink, it recalculates how to get pink on highlights. I choose greens for the shadows. It recalculates how to get greens. It's all to make RGB curves and curves in general easier and smarter to use. Now, at any moment, if I go, this is not working for me, I go back to my presets. I can go right back to that first warm one that I made that I like. Cool. Small little thing too, if I like it, but I want less opacity. Yeah, you can do the whole folder here, but you can also, no matter where you are inside the folder, let me just close that. You can change the opacity right here any way you want. But of course, if you know how to work the layer window, you can do anything you want in there. So you see how this exploratory process works. Now, just to be clear again, let's go back to explore and hit the button a few times. So that's like a hazy look, right? So let's click on this one. We get a kind of a yellowish look. We can go back in our history state to the one we like, and we can go forward again. Okay. It saves about 30 history steps. You shouldn't need to know more than that um, or need more than that in general. Uh, depending on customer feedback, if people want a more robust or smart history or some kind of documented history, we can do that. Now, here's a cool result that I like, right? And it's too much contrast in my world. I go to create. I don't have to reshuffle. I can go to create right now and just turn down the contrast and then brighten it if I want to. So between create and explore, you can, well, explore color. You can find color inspiration from all kinds of directions, either dial it in a little more directly or 100% explore. Speaking of, let me show you an example of that. I'm gonna pull the ranges to the maximums that we have allowed them to be, because again, full 100% maximum based on what data is possible uh, would be ridiculous. Trust me, this is gonna be ridiculous. But to give you an idea, 180 degrees hue angle search or exploration on both highlights and shadows and maximum here. Hit the play button and now we get all kinds of wild results. If this inspires you and this is what you're after, by all means do this. Put maximum as high as you want and you never know what you might find. But when you hit our shuffle, our random, the, you know, the coded one for CGX, it's going to find ranges that are a little more potentially usable for you. And then you can play around until you adjust. Yeah. You know, um, our beta team was like, Hey, occasionally I get green skin. I understand that. But the whole point is to explore and see what you end up with. And if you like the potential tonalities of something, you can just come in here and change it manually to get something that you like and then tone down the intensity. Right. There's so many different options that you can do here. Who knows how you can make this exactly the way you want it. So I'll make the shadows maybe more yellow. Who knows? Whatever. It's a look. Right. And at any moment, no matter where you are, whether you're at create, you can reshuffle completely random or you can go to explore and reshuffle in your range. Actually, this is a full random. But if I want to, I can set the ranges to like, you know, you can be real minimal. For example, let's say I don't want a lot of shuffling. I want to pick everything nice and middle groove. Cool. Like that. Right. So when I hit play, it's going to pick intensity, saturation, and brightness somewhere in the middle. And if I make them all down, this is again, just a demo to show you guys what's possible and how easy it is. Now I want all these four parameters to be minimal. Of course, with brightness being down, you can see everything is going to be dark, but there's so many different ways to play hit random. I'm not necessarily liking uh, that. So I go to create and I tame down the intensity. Tone that down, turn down the saturation. Oh, it's already pretty down. Maybe increase the contrast. Gosh, I could just explore all day long and I can just reset if I want. On create, now it's absolutely no different at all. It could be as simple as I want cyan highlights and I want orange shadows. And then I play with intensity. 
until I get something I think I like. There you go. And maybe a little more red on the shadows. And that could be a color grade that you like. Very, very simple. You don't have to mess with it too much. Maybe tone down the intensity a bit. You can get as creative or as toned down as you want, as exploratory as you want, as radical as you want. So many different options. And again, you have the random um, at any given moment, regardless of what tab you're on and presets, which are, you know, very similar. We have a video about presets. You should watch that so you can see how to edit them and whatnot. This is our overview video. So play around with it. That is the hallmark and the principle of CGX is to play, 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 play. And we gave you two different ways to play around in a very sort of visual hands-on way to get things immediately because, you know, a hundred percent random is cool, but we felt like if you start fully random and then tailor it down, 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 narrow it down to the look that you want as you're exploring within seconds, you can find a color look um, that maybe you didn't consider, which is why something like this is so powerful, because I know as we've been developing this, I've hit color grades that I'm just like, I, I never would have thought of that. And then I just changed the opacity a little bit or something. And I have a grade that I wouldn't have thought of, but I love. See, that is the hallmark and the beauty of CGX. So that was a quick overview. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below, but you can find more information on CGX on the MVP website as mvpretouchtools.com.